Hi there, Robin here from Expert. And today we're going to talk about how to hook up a phone to your mixer so you can receive phone calls. We're going to do it three different ways with three different mixers. Uh, this way you get a full understanding of what's going on. It's also going to help you understand the basic principles of it. So this way you can apply it to a mixer that maybe you have slightly different than the ones we're going to show today. We are going to have a Pile, we're going to have a Mackie, and we're going to have uh, an Alesis. Uh, so those mixers are going to cover a bunch of different ways of hooking it up. One is we do need to have a send out on our mixer, or we have to have a monitor controlled out on our mixer. And if we don't have those things, well, we're going to have to take a look, see at some other ways. But we're also going to talk about what not to do and what not to use. So that's today's video. So we're going to start here with the actual pile mixer. That's what we've got in front of us. That's what's here right now. And it does have USB. It does have a, a standard audio interface, which means CD quality going to the laptop and coming back from the laptop, two channels. We do want to hook this up to our phone. And to do that properly, we are going to need either the Go Vocal, which is what we have right here today. This is the Go Vocal. Uh, now, Go Vocal is for microphones. You can also get Go Guitar, uh, and that is really good as well. And you can also get the iRigs. Depending on the store you shop at, it's going to define if they're buying from commercial pro audio distributors, they're going to probably be buying the Go Vocal. If they buy a lot of computer supplies, they'll probably be buying the iRig. So don't feel bad if you get one versus the other. They'll both work. Also, the microphone and the guitar option will also both work. So let's take a closer look at that. So right here what we have is this happens to be an XLR. Uh, it could also have been the, it could also have been a quarter inch if this was the actual Go guitar. So with the XLR, just means that we're gonna need a cable with an XLR input on it. If we had the guitar, we'd be using a quarter inch similar to this. We'd be able to use this. Now again, the two brands are pretty much interchangeable when it comes to this task. The one thing you don't wanna use is you don't want to really buy those adapters. The little, you know, five, ten dollar adapters on Amazon that has a headphone and a microphone splitter. That's okay if you use the right type of, let's say, lavalier microphone for it. But notice I'm plugging the microphone directly into that connector. It's not something I'd want to plug a mixer into. And the reason is the mixer gain is very strong. It can overpower the processor inside your phone. So the little chips that make that microphone input work. What can happen? You can damage it. If you damage it, well, you know, phones cost anywhere between $500 to $1,000, sometimes more. Maybe you didn't pay for yours. Maybe it's on a plan. But at the end of the day, if you damage it, you're going to have to either fix it or replace it, and that can run into a lot of money. So buying one of these guys from a store like us or from our Amazon link down below is always a great way to go. Uh, Safer, reliable, works really well. Remember, these things do operate on batteries in this case here. It does operate on a nine volt that you have to put inside. If you're gonna do this, start with a fresh nine volt. It works out a lot better. So here we go. We've got our audio interface. In this case, I'm using TC Helicon's Go Vocal. We're going to need a proper cable to make that happen. And that cable in this case is gonna be the first one is gonna be a male XLR, that's three pin to a quarter inch unbalanced. The other cable we're gonna to need to make this all happen is a stereo 3.5 adapter, which in this case is for the TC Helicon. It's also the same adapter, by the way, you would use for the iRig. That is gonna go off to two unbalanced quarter inch connectors. Notice we've got a three ring split here and we only have a one split here. This is how we're gonna get the sound from the actual phone, that's the person talking, into the mixer. This one is gonna allow the person calling in, or me calling the person, to hear me talk. Now what we really have to do is make sure that the person at the other end doesn't hear their own voice because it will be at about a 50 millisecond delay and that'll be a horrible echo in the phone. Think of it as whenever you've had a bad connection on a phone call and you hear your own voice but on a delay, so it's an echo in your head. You can't carry a conversation like that. You just end up calling the person back. That is what we have to avoid here. So how are we gonna do it? Back to the mixer. We're going to take the first cable, 
which is our actual microphone. This is the output, the connection that's gonna come out of this and plug into the unit. And we're gonna come here, and what we're gonna look for, in this case on this mixer, is first, do we have a control out? Yes. Do we have any control out options? No. But we do have a send. Now the send is send effects. That has to do with these yellow knobs here. So right underneath where the yellow knobs are written, it says FX, so which would be our, you know, our delay or reverb, that sort of thing. But it also says slash send. So that would be the signal going out. So I'm gonna plug this into here. Let's drape this around here so it's a little bit out of the way. And then I'm gonna turn around and plug that into my XLR and put right here. So now the Go Vocal is now listening to the mixer via these buttons here, not these ones down here, not this, but these knobs here. This is real important. We're gonna to get to that in a second. Now, I have to be able to hear the caller themselves. That brings us to that second cable we needed, which is the 3.5 stereo connection, just like a headphone connection, out to two quarter inch. This allows the left and right to be separate. So on the actual mixer, we're gonna find our last channels on the board, which happen to be over here five and six. I'm gonna plug in two five and six here. And then I'm gonna be able to plug in to the Go Vocal right here. There's a headphone jack there. So now when they talk from the phone, that's gonna come into the box. That's gonna come out of this headphone cable and go straight into the mixer. Now I do need to plug in a microphone. Now a microphone could be any of your choices. It can be dynamic, a condenser, a lavalier, whatever works best for you and your environment. Uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna plug a dynamic in here just for reference sake. Once I've plugged these guys together, I now have a microphone. So I have a microphone, plus I have this neat little harness that's off to the side. You now have a single plug to go to your phone. Remember, the two cables that are plugged in here, one for us to hear the caller and one for the caller to hear us. This is where the important part is. When I actually talk on this microphone, I want the caller to hear me. For that to happen, I need to turn up that send knob, which is here. That's the send knob. I need to turn that up for them to hear me. For me to hear the caller and for me to be able to record the caller, that's gonna take place on this, is the line level knob here. Right there, there we go. Now, depending on the type of audio interface that's built into your mixer, you may have to gain this up, in which case we do. So this way I can get the meters going and that's going to make everything work on the actual computer software and we'll be able to see how the signal is. Do get a signal check before you actually get into everything. Make sure they can hear you and you can hear them and that works out really, really well. So that is option number one. So again, we've used, this is gonna be a pretty standard setup when it comes to getting the audio in here. So if you just wanna actually capture somebody's voice and you don't need them to hear you, this will be it basically, that connection right here. Now. I'm using the send function and I'm only turning it up here. All the other ones were turned down. So this way the caller doesn't hear anything. Now, if I do want the caller to hear something, let's say I have somebody else or I need to have them listen to some samples or some music or something, maybe I plug that into channel three and four and I want them to listen to three and four as much as I do. So I'll turn those up. So now that's also going to the send. Notice the one I'm not turning up is the one on channel five and six where that's where his voice is. That's where his or her voice is. And it's coming in here. So I don't want them to hear an echo of themselves. So I turn it down. I can still adjust the bass and treble, create some clarity. I can get the gain right. I can do all of that. Just don't turn this up for them because you don't want them to hear that. It'll be very annoying on their part. There you go. So that is how we do it when all we have is a send out option, which is what we have here. I don't need to use a return. I don't need to use all the other ones. Just that one there. Off you go. One very important add-on to this and to all the other ones, use a set of headphones if you have to talk to them. Because if you use monitors in the room, because you're using a dynamic microphone, you think everything's fine, they're going to hear themselves off the monitors through the microphone, through the channel that it's plugged into, and you're gonna be right back to where you started with you know, that annoying sound. So, so that is the best way to get all around that, is just use a set of headphones. And if you really, really are stuck, use a dynamic microphone and keep the speakers on very, very low uh, and far away, pointed away from the microphone so you're not gonna have any direct sound reference 
from the actual speakers. So let's move on from this mixer and let's go to a Mackie mixer. Okay, here we are, next mixer. This is the Pro FX version three from Mackie. Uh, we are using this mixer here to be specific because it has a dedicated monitor out that we can control from the mixer itself. It has enough knobs to do all of that. That's a good thing. So we're gonna bring this over here so we can see it off of this camera here. And now we're gonna get to uh, talk about it. So we, we've got everything else covered. The first part, we did talk about the gold vocal and how all that works. So, so we are gonna be taking our signal that's going into our gold vocal, right, just our XLR here at the bottom. And we're gonna get the other end of that cable. And we're gonna plug that in to the monitor out. And that is gonna be right here on top. There's two available slots for us to go into. We do have an FX send and we have a monitor send. So we're gonna go right into the monitor send. And why we did that is because down here we have an AUX and MON stands for monitor. That allows these green knobs to control what's gonna happen on this unit here. So that means everything we want the caller to actually hear is going to be now coming off the monitor send and going in to TC Helicon or again, iRake, no right or wrong. And now we've got to plug in the portion so this way I can hear the caller. So now the caller can hear us, I need to hear the caller. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the other end of this cable and I'm going to plug it in to the headphone jack. That rig is ready to go. All I need to do is plug it into my phone and I'm all set. Where do I put the other two cables? Well, I'm gonna pick the last two channels that are paired off together. So in this case, I need my line inputs. That happens to be channel nine and 10 on this mixer here. And I'm gonna plug that right in here. There you go, that is done. So now I can come down here, make sure that all my green knobs, my auxiliary knobs in that case, going to the monitor are all off. And I'm going to be able to just dial that one channel up. So I don't need anything here. I am gonna say, microphone in here. Now, if I had two people in a room with me, uh, I mean, this is a, it's a good point. If I had two or three people around the table plus one caller coming in, I would set this up for here. Now, what if I had two callers? Well, I'd come over here and hook up another TC Helicon onto the actual board on somebody else's cell phone and have that caller come through on that line there. And I would again, make sure no auxiliary is being used. And everything I want these folks to listen to, I would be able to turn up here. Now it's easy with this mixer to hook up two callers at the same time, because I can use the yellow knobs for the second caller. I would just plug in to the input just below the FX end. And that means I'm bypassing the effects in the unit and I'm just gonna be using both the green and the yellow knob to control what the callers are gonna be able to hear. So if there was three of us in the studio, I would basically, let's say, turn up the first three for the first three mics in the studio and then I would be able to have them hear what's going on at that point. Uh, so I can now bring all the levels according that I need up. So this way, all that's gonna be in line and they're gonna hear us through here. So that's them. And I'm gonna be able to adjust my volume, my gain outputs going into my computer so I can record that on the software. So that is how easy that works. So remember, a bigger mixer allows me to take more callers in on multiple lines and allows me to get more microphones out. It gives me some freedom because I do have a monitor send in this case and I can still utilize the effects as a send option as well. So that's two separate dedicated send options off of one unit. And remember, I'm not gonna be turning up the aux levels or the send or monitor levels, depending on what your mixer says, on the channels that are connected to the TC Helicon, to the phone. Uh, again, I don't want them to hear those channels. So those will definitely be off. The only ones I do want to turn up are the ones I want the caller to actually hear when they're calling in. This is the channels they want to listen to. Everything else is going to be for me in the studio here. And then treat the rest like you normally would. All right, so we've brought over an Alesis Multimix 8 USB with effects. This is going to be the mixer we're going to use this time. It's going to be similar, almost identical to what we were doing on the Mackie. Uh, the only thing difference is a lot of people have this because it costs half the price. So if you are interested in getting a mixer to go along, by all means, check out the link down below. It'll bring you to this on our website or Amazon in the States or Canada, depending on where you live. So if you need a mixer 
and this is pretty much all you're going to be doing with it is stuff like this and you need something to properly connect into your computer that comes with software that comes with everything you need uh, and you want to have something really good for talk interviews maybe you're just having videos where you bounce off somebody else that you used to have in the studio with you but now you're going to do it through a call-in by all means this is a good way to go it does an awful lot of things jack of all trades kind of mixer and uh, that's why it's here so to hook it up we're gonna follow pretty much the same suit. What I do pay attention for on my mixers, I wanna see buttons like this. If I have these buttons, that's good. What am I looking at? I'm looking at send options. I've got my effects, so I don't need my effects for the particular project, so I can use that. And underneath that, I have an aux preamp out, or aux pre out below that. So those are gonna be the ones I'm gonna be using to let the caller hear the conversations going on in the room. So that is gonna be this cable here. The first one is the single quarter inch cable coming from my TC Helicon. I'm going to find the aux send because we'll choose that as being the option. So we'll plug that in right there. Then we'll be able to take the signal that we've taken from the actual TC Helicon. And that's gonna be the actual voice of the person talking on the phone. We need to hear them, of course. So that's gonna be in channel seven and eight. I usually, like I said, me personally, I just choose the last two channels that are available. It keeps everything off to the side. And of course, I need to plug my microphone in. So I'm gonna plug my mic into channel one. If I had another person here and I wanted them to be on the, on the actual recording and on everything that's going on and I want the person at the other end of the phone to hear them as well, I, of course I'd be plugging them in here. And now I basically adjust my mixer the way I normally would for my USB connection and make sure that I'm not gonna be turning up any of the aux or effects, depending on how I plugged it in, uh, on channel seven and eight in this case. Remember, never turn it up on the caller. Turn up the channels you want them to hear. So in this case, I want them to hear me, so I'm gonna turn up my channel one. And then if I had a second person, I'd turn up number two. If I did have background music or anything like that that was going on, or maybe I was playing a YouTube video for a movie trailer and we were gonna talk about that kind of thing, then I would turn around and turn up that music so he can hear it as well. That's what's going on there. You can even listen to or have them listen to whatever's playing on a computer. Uh, so again, if that's a YouTube video or some movie trailer and you want them to hear that at the same time you're hearing it, you can do that uh, with this mixer. So those are the advantages. Once you've done this, do a sound check with them by calling them. Don't forget to plug in your uh, iRig or TC Helicon into your phone. Uh, these things do work for uh, any Android, so a Samsung phone or any other phone, and of course all the iPhones as well just plugs in. It does come in software and all that kind of stuff, but that's it. That's how you hook up this guy here. Now, if you happen to have a mixer that doesn't have a USB output, and you're going, should I buy a new mixer? Should I buy a USB output? Well, if your mixer is broken physically, like something's not working right, yes, go out and get a new mixer. But if you really like your mixer, it's a big rig, it does really well, but it's all analog and it has no digital, you can just buy an audio interface, at least two channel with quarter inch on it. So this way you can plug out of your mains and go into that audio interface and then that audio interface can go into your computer. If you really like the big mixer that you have, some people say, well, you know, it's great, but you know, for the price, I can buy myself something like this or some other options, which are about the same price as audio interfaces. Again, it depends on how you're gonna use it, which is really gonna define which way to go. So there you go. That pretty much covers it for this. We've done three different mixers on it. Um, it's pretty straightforward once you understand what's going on with the wiring and what's most important. Again, most important is you don't want the caller to hear their own voice because it'll be 50 millisecond delay minimum. It'll sound like an echo. They'll just want to get off the phone. And uh, you want them to, of course, be able to hear you. So these are the ways to make that happen. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you're curious about uh, having a question thrown in for uh, question of the day, by all means, just title it question of the day, put it down there. Uh, I keep my eyes, so keep it general. So this way it helps out a lot of people. Uh, and uh, don't forget to hit the bell notification. And I think I said subscribe. Probably popped up on the board behind me a few times during the video. But I'm going to say thanks for watching and bye for now. We'll see you on the next video. And that's a wrap.